this one's perfectly fine. And that led to this whole thing of the creation of a new middle class. And so you would have basically all these people who, who needed the prosthetics, who during the history of the world leading up to 2027, there are some economic falls, there are some problems in the world, and those people are getting jobs because they are, there are dangerous jobs that, like for example, we open up oil shell development. Okay, well the people who are getting those jobs are the people who are stronger, who have mechanical arms, who can start doing this. The people who are getting jobs in, in finance are the ones who are getting these brain chips and they're getting better. And so what's happening is there's a new rise of a middle class and all these people are getting new money, new income, but all these other people who don't have it are being left behind financially. And so now you're starting to get a lot of prejudice and a lot of fear because if I can't get out of my economic class because I can't afford these augmentations, What's going to happen? If my father loses his job because your father has a brain chip and is smarter and can do more than my dad can, I'm going to start hating you. And this leads to this whole dissension in society. And there are many, many reasons in the society why people are either for augmentation or against it. Sometimes they're against it for religious grounds. They're saying you're tampering with the human DNA, you're tampering with mankind, and you are playing God, and you shouldn't do that. The Purity First group that you saw their campaign, they're really largely motivated by that, that religious feeling of you are, you are playing God, but there's also undercurrents of it that are based in the economics. So there is a huge dissension over the augmentations. Uh, just by a show of hands, how many of you would uh, get augmented to have a better job? It's a big decision. You made that really quickly. How about the 2K more a year? I'll do it. <laughs> and if I could add to that, um, our society, especially in the United States, has a, a competitive nature that's probably unsurpassed in the history of the world. You look at professional baseball with steroids. Um, interesting article came out a couple months ago that I think the, the number was, no, quote me on the number, I think it was something like 40 to 45 percent of academic professors are using ADHD in Ritalin. So the society has already said we're going to compete and we're going to compete without taking any, uh, any limitations on that competition. So the question isn't will people abuse augmentation? The question is when will they, when will they be small enough, when will the surgery be quick enough, and when will they be cheap enough for people to abuse them in ways that we couldn't imagine? So I think it's interesting that, that, that it's there. The billions of dollars being spent on consumer products will eventually lead to these consumer products being integrated into your nervous system. I have no doubt in my mind that that's going to happen. In fact, probably no one in this room left their hotel room or their house without their cell phone connected to their hand. When this gets small enough, it'll be more convenient just to have it in your hand. Those kinds of ideas are, are, are not too far out of the ground. So the world of ASX isn't so much science fiction as uh, inevitability in some ways. Yeah, I think that when you have, uh, in some of the areas, I, I don't know that there's going to be a need, unfortunately, for super soldiers, because the government views it as saying soldiers are relatively cheap, and it's cheaper to have a soldier die than to make a super soldier. Unfortunately, the economics will drive how this stuff is adopted. When soldiers come back with injuries, we, we clap for them on the plane, but we grossly underfund their care at the better the hospital, et cetera, et cetera. So our society values certain things. Most likely the way that we're going to value is cosmetics, where people will pay anything to look young and beautiful. And so there's lots of augmentations that you can imagine that are already today being utilized and are going to grow in the future. So I think that's where the adoption will be the quickest. And we saw the uh, Purity First trailer. And by the way, that was the first time that's been shown. So yeah, comment,
about how complex the human DNA um, system is. In my mind, we're hundreds of years away from making advances that would be on the level that we make mechanically. It's just really, really difficult to do what God did in terms of the biology. So there's protests there, but I think they're unfounded. The other part of that is the big protest that everybody knows about is healthcare. And what's happening at the very highest levels of our government is an argument over who's in charge of your body. Uh, right now, the government is in charge of your body, and a set of economists are in charge of telling you what you're allowed to get paid for to fix. And so as the technology advances, quite um, unbiased or with no politics, the technology will be utilized in different ways. The expensive technologies will not be given to the masses based on the way that these healthcare decisions are being made. So right now, the government is already deciding how healthcare will be delivered, and that won't change in the future. And I think people have problems with that uh, if they're not getting the, the greatest and best advances that we know we have available. So if anybody's had a splinter, your, your body says, we don't like splinters, so this is a foreign object. So within the first seven days, we're going to send what's called a, a, an acute inflammation cycle where your body surrounds it, makes it uh, uh, inflamed, it's red, it's swollen. And your body's saying, we're attacking this thing because we don't know what it is. If it stays in there long enough, the body will just form a scar tissue around it. And then for a splinter, your body actually pushes it out through your epidermis and gets rid of it. So it doesn't like implants. So a big part of the industrial research today is how to integrate these materials um, into the human body. The interesting thing, the most research has gone into dentistry, where they're able to replace teeth and put it directly into your jaw. That's growing into the rest of the body, but that seems to be the easiest place to innovate at this point. And what he just described about the body rejecting the splinter, that in our game is actually what is happening to some people, some many people in the game. Your body over time will start rejecting your augment and it will force those, the, the connectors that are connecting your body to the mechanical parts, it will force them out and you can die very horrible deaths. And we have in the game this idea that um, there is a drug that was developed that allows you to to, that, that tricks your body into keeping your augments and, and tricks your immune system, and it's called neuropathy. And that's kind of the, the science behind why people and why augmentations are so costly, so feared, but for many people, the risk is there. As you can see in the Purity First video, too, they talk about how uh, you need the, the, the drug to keep your augmentations, otherwise you're be struck out like an addict, mm -hmm. so to speak. So. Uh, Mary, what kind of uh, neurological and psychological ramifications are there beginning to augmentations? Well, that's one of the big questions in the game because also we have the groups that are against augmentations who are basically saying one of, one of the other reasons to be against it is because we really haven't researched what is the psychological effect of cutting off your arm and becoming mechanical. How does your psychology deal with that? Do you still feel human? Do you feel suddenly like, okay, so I touch this, am I really feeling something? So there are, you know, that's one of the one of the leading questions is that we haven't studied the psychological ramifications of this and it's causing disorders. It's causing also the psychological problem of someone who just has to keep getting augmented because you know, okay, so I bought my first Mac when it first came out and then two years later it was like, oh my God, I gotta get the better one and, and I gotta get the better one after that and it's the same with the augmentation. So those are the next machine issues. gun that comes up in my arm. I have to get out. Yeah, I have to do that. I have to, you know, and then oh my god, what if my neighbor has this and I've got to be able to keep him and well, his machine so, gun. so there are those kind of ramifications as well that are explored. Uh, I think we're gonna open it up to uh, the floor here for questions. Uh, Matt is gonna I guess regulate. Regulate. If you ask a question, you get a shirt, so that's an inside of there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, now people go home. <laughs> so, let me save you all a little bit of time. If you're coming up to ask about the ship game, it's August 23rd. Yes. <laughs> Is it on the PC? Yes, it's on the PC. Yes, it's on the PC. Yes, you can pre order now, too. Yes, it's on the PC and Xbox and PS3. Yes, you can pre-order. You can go now and do that. Yeah, if you really want to. Yeah. Uh, what else? All right, so I have That's three sizes of shirts, by the way. Extra large, large, and medium. This guy's wearing a medium. So when you come up and ask a question, just kind of know what you want. And turn the size, and I'll get it for you. Uh, so I was wondering 
how exactly does the evolution between the first day accessing, where the emphasis is on nano augmentation, and the mechanical augmentation of human revolution happen? What is the impetus for the change to having the, the nanologs? Well, let me start by saying Deus Ex Human Revolution is in 2027. Deus Ex 1 is 2052. And we have 25 years between those two games. And a lot of times I get a question, how could you actually have multiple endings when we really know the ending? Because we know. And the fact of the matter is that we still have 25 more years to play with. So. So, and the world can change overnight. So I can't really answer your question because maybe we're exploring that in the game, but maybe we're also exploring it in 25 years. So unfortunately, I can't really answer that. <laughs> Thank you for the insightful uh, conversation. Just wanted to ask you here. Uh, you, you can speak up just a bit. Sure. So I just wanted to ask, I uh, saw a bunch of videos that are really well done, really well put together. They seem to be out of the scope of the actual gameplay. So I wanted to know how you're immersing the actual story, the environment, the economical situation, the politics, and the ethical aspects of the world you're creating, the universe, into the game. And what Denton, I think, is it not Jason? It's Jensen. Jensen. Um, basically, what we've done in the game is we have created that entire world, and we've tried to really immerse you in the world. And the way that we're kind of getting that kind of experience across is through visuals that you're exploring and also through talking with people. We, we use many different layers of storytelling in the game. So you can talk to people, you can take side quests, they allow you to explore some of that. Um, you can also uh, read a lot of the, there's like over, I don't even know, I've forgotten now how many books are in the game, but there are a lot of books to read. There's, a, there's like 600 emails in the game. There's like newspapers. So by exploring and playing the game, you'll do that. And also, you will ultimately get involved in the building tension that's going on from a plot standpoint. And I don't want to give away plot details, but from a plot standpoint, you actually will feel that tension increasing and get involved in that tension through the gameplay, through side quests, through your missions. Okay. In our modern post-industrial economies, winners and losers are determined more by their brain power as opposed to their physical ability. So would you expect augmentations to be more mental than physical, or is it like, so not to this is the game? So, so the, the quick answer to that is that there's a very fine line between mental and physical, because your nervous system goes all over the place. There's experiments being run now in animals and in the clinic to enhance your memory. So the idea that your brain is a muscle is very well accepted in neuroscience. And so they've shown that you can optimize and you can also erase memories fairly easily. So yeah, the answer to your question is yes. Um, what did you guys do in particular to get the environments to match with all the you know potential technology that's going to come up with the prosthetics and uh, all the technology that's going with the individual? What did you do in the environment to like that? Um, from, for, again, from a story writer's perspective, that's really a better answer for the art director um, to give. So I can only give you the writer's perspective. Usually when you're writing games, the writer is kind of shoved to the sideline and left out. But what was really amazing working with the team that I'm working with is that they knew story was integral. So I had unprecedented input into a lot of stuff. And I basically um, created a lot of that background with my writing team. And then Jonathan, the art director, looked at it in terms of, of all that and tried to tell through the environments the story we were doing. Now, in terms of uh, designing a future, he also, he and his team, they, they did a lot of, just as we did scientific research, they did a lot of research into architecture, into fashion design, into computers, and they kind of incorporated all that into their artistic designs. Um, of course, they didn't want to make it one of his goals was to be not really, um, we're not doing photorealism, we're trying to make a very distinct visual style. Um, so how well we did, it will be up to you guys to determine.